definite cleansing. That game was awful, but it was almost glorious in its failure. It was so hilariously bad, you overlooked the underlying reason behind it. This wasn't made just because somebody wanted to kill Jews and Mexicans, although I wouldn't doubt that was an added bonus. No, the real reason this was made is actually far more interesting. The people who made this game believed they were doing what was right. They felt that by making this game, they could get across their message and recruit others to their side, allowing them to indulge in some sort of childish fantasy or change their way of thinking. Now, it doesn't work, like, at all, but there is a passion here. Despite being a horrible, offensive, unplayable abomination of a first-person shooter, ethnic cleansing still existed because someone wanted to make it. It was their decision to put time, effort, and resources into making it. So they must have believed it was something worth spending time on. Whether that belief is misguided, offensive, ignorant, or intolerant is purely up for debate. But what happens when you have a group of people who aren't instantly soldier pariahs for believing in what they believe? What happens when they decide to make a recruitment tool to bring in the young gamers? Well, then you have the PETA video games. Yes, PETA, the animal rights organization that most people compare to the Taliban, actually released video games in order to draw attention to themselves and make various statements about animals and their portrayal in the media. Of course, when I say video games, I mean that in the loosest sense of the word. I'd say they're of Newgrounds quality, but that's an insult to some of the awesome stuff you can find on Newgrounds. Now, these games were all released as free, browser-based titles, so I can't do the usual reviewer pantomime shtick where I pretend to play the game on the console, so... To the PC! I, I guess I should've gotten up during the transition. It started out with really simple games back in 2003 as part of the PETA Kids website, which really dislikes capitalizing their eyes for some reason. After all, if you're gonna recruit people, you better get them young before they're able to do science above a fourth grade level. Revenge of the PETA Tomatoes. Throw me at a fur wearer. Well, nice to know they're being objective and not trying to influence anybody. You have your choice of six different tomatoes, like beefsteak, cherry, salad, or Rambo. Your first step is to choose a tomato and then throw them at random people on the street. <coughs> Jesus, fuck! And then the second step is to turn down your fucking speakers. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say street? I meant horribly out of scale cardboard cutout of New York City. A cutout which still contains the World Trade Center. Did I mention this game came out in 2003? Wait, am I supposed to be throwing these tomatoes at the fur wearers or the giant foxes the size of buildings? I think those are a more pressing threat. I guess we know where Peter's priorities lie. Once you score nine points, which is a pretty random number considering you have two digits, you move on to the next level. Or at least you would if the game didn't give you a 404 error. Even the monkey looks ashamed to be on this page. Let's move on. Next up, we have Lobster Liberation, which is actually a fairly decent Frogger clone. The stupidest parts are just the way it's presented. There's just something off about the instructions. They're written with such deadpan seriousness, almost as if it's designed for people who've never played a video game before. They could have just said, watch out for hazards, but they actually go and list every single one of them, including poisonous lobster bushes. Which is a phrase so stupid, I couldn't help but Google it just to see where it would take me. All it did was lead me back to the PETA website, because apparently they're the only people in history to have strung those three words together in that order. The way every hazard is underlined kind of reminds me of Mad Libs and... Wait, is that the joke? Lobster Lib? Ugh. Let's move on to the actual game. Like I said, it's just Frogger. The only difference is that you're a lobster instead of a frog. The cars will honk at you if you cut in front of them, but they sound more like clown noses squeaking. And when you die, you actually have to wait for the paramedics to come rescue you. See, this is the kind of Disneyland fantasy world PETA wants to live in, where a lobster can call the paramedics after falling off a log, but if you're blind and need a seeing eye dog as a lifelong companion, FUCK YOU, SLAVE MASTER! But you don't give a shit about their original games, right? No, you want to see the ones that blatantly mock your favorite video game characters, don't you? Okay, you asked for it. This is Super Chick Sisters from KentuckyFriedCruelty.com. After spending about three weeks downloading the game, you discover that Holy shit, they finally hired a graphic artist! There's, like, actual animation and shading. The story is one of the greatest things you're going to see today. Pamela Anderson, dressed like Princess Peach, you know, like she always does, goes on national news to announce that KFC's special ingredient is... <gasps> cruelty to chickens! Ugh. Beating the crap out of chickens doesn't make them taste better, it just makes them more tender. But before she can get the word out, she's kidnapped by Colonel Sanders. Unfortunately, Mario and Luigi have sore arms from playing with their Wii all day. So it's up to the Super Chick Sisters, Nugget and Chickette, to save her. In between each level, you get to see the next chapter of the story. First, Mario goes to see... himself. 
then runs into activists from People for the Ethical Treatment of Turtles. Well, I guess it's a good thing they're Koopas and not Turtles. Then Princess Peach gets jealous that he's trying to rescue someone else instead of her. Then he encounters Yoshi and asks for help saving Pamela Anderson. Yoshi, my faith for steed, saddle up, we have to hurry and save the day. What makes you think you can ride me around anyway? My new friends have taught me I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. You know, it's stuff like this that just makes my job so much easier. I don't want to go with you and do good. I want to join PETA. Now, you're never going to believe it, because I don't even really believe it, but this game is actually good. I know, I'm as shocked as you, but let's break it down. I have played a lot of shitty platformers, and this is simply not one of them. Super Chick Sisters is basic, but it actually feels really good to control. You only use the arrow keys, so you can play it with one hand. Collision detection is accurate, and jumping physics feel natural. Even the levels are pretty nicely designed. There's somewhat non-linear, rewarding exploration with bonus points and extra lives. But don't worry, I'm not going soft on this game. There's plenty of stupid shit here as well. It obviously takes its inspiration from Super Mario Bros., and you power up by collecting... boxes? The fuck? Sup, dog? We heard you like boxes, so we put a box in your box so you can box while you box! I... I don't get it. But they act like mushrooms, making you bigger and letting you break blocks. Unfortunately, there's no equivalent of a fire flower, which seems like a wasted opportunity. You'd think PETA would have splooged themselves at the idea of a chicken roasting the colonel for a change. The only enemies you encounter are these robot spiders with Colonel Sanders heads. They're not that hard, but their hitbox is so huge it's almost impossible to get through the game without clipping one of them, but the boxes are so plentiful it's really nothing to worry about. As you play, you keep encountering protesters who give you a bunch of useless anti-KFC propaganda. Many birds are so stressed from being de-beaked they cannot eat. Yes, the stress of being de-beaked is the reason they're not eating. Not the fact that part of their face has been cut off. That's like saying people who lost their arms don't masturbate because they're not in the mood. The KFC workers have to catch so many that they just grab them and throw them onto trucks, which often breaks their wings and legs. <sighs> okay, let's get this out of the way. PETA did do investigations and discovered that there were animals treated inhumanely at various chicken farms. That much is true. But they were farms that provided chickens to any number of poultry processors like Tyson, Swanson, McDonald's, and KFC. The KFC employees themselves have nothing to do with the way the chickens are raised or treated. But that's only a small minority of farms and only in a small number of confirmed cases. This game is blowing things way out of proportion and making it seem like that's the standard. It's not. Most chickens are treated humanely and slaughtered with attention toward making it as painless and efficient as possible. After all, it's not very cost effective to sell chickens with broken bones that can't be resold to consumers, right? So fuck you for making me break my groove and be serious for a moment. You know how much I hate that. The final boss is Colonel Sanders himself, and this boss battle reminds me of something but I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh yeah, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Once you defeat him, you get your standard PETA bullshit about how Colonel Sanders himself kills all the chickens the company sells, despite being dead for 35 years. And you get a code to play as Pamela Anderson. But she's purely a cosmetic choice, so who would ever play through this game twice unless you're capturing footage for it? It's competent enough to warrant one playthrough just to see what happens to Mario between each level, but it gets monotonous and repetitive very quickly, so it may not even be worth that. But if putting you off KFC isn't enough, how about a game that flat out mocks anybody who dares to eat something with a face? This is Cooking Mama. Mama kills animals. Again, the artwork and music is really spot on. This actually does feel like a Flash version of Cooking Mama, except with a horrible slant toward pushing their vegetarian agenda. This was released right around Thanksgiving and has a link asking you to urge Majesco to make a vegetarian recipe version of Cooking Mama. Because that was everybody's first thought when playing Cooking Mama, right? This game is gonna make my kids want to kill animals! They make a conscious effort to show the most hyperbolic and disgusting process possible. All the evil, satanic, carnivorous dishes have this ugly green tint. It's like they know they have to make Thanksgiving turkey into a wretched, unappetizing mess just to stand a chance at getting their point across. Because, of course, just presenting the facts wouldn't be fair to them. Hell, even the eggs are made to be disgusting. Remember how goddamn annoying cracking eggs was in the original game? Now it doesn't matter. Doing the shell, some blood, even some random feathers that appear from nowhere. It's all good. Wait, isn't cutting the head off supposed to come before you put the stuffing in it? Or for that matter, before you even buy the turkey? So, once you stuff the turkey and put it in the oven, what are you rewarded with? Other than a blistered bird that not even Wile E. Coyote would eat? You get to watch a video of turkeys being slaughtered! Hooray! 
Of course, if making your opponent into a straw man isn't enough, why not build up your own agenda as the only cruelty-free option by making a tofurkey? Ah, golden brown and full of lies, just like Mama used to make. So because of your actions, now Mama loves animals! Uh, how much does Mama love animals, anyway? That turkey looks a little afraid of what Mama's gonna do to him. Well, if you haven't gotten your fill of tofu from that, maybe you'll enjoy Super Tofu Boy! Now, this is one parody I honestly don't understand. The entire idea behind PETA, besides violating Godwin's law to protest cattle farms, is that they want everybody to know that meat comes from living animals. So why would they be against a game that is literally about a sentient being made of meat? As for the gameplay, well, you know how everybody praised Super Meat Boy for having such perfect controls and jumping physics? Yeah, this game is nothing like that. I'm not even gonna cut it slack for being coded in Flash, because the original Meat Boy was in Flash and that game controlled just fine. The controls just feel mushy and horribly unresponsive. Every time you die, which will happen a lot, you have to make sure you release every single key or you won't be able to use it the next time. Tofu Boy sticks to everything, but jumping sends you catapulting off to the opposing wall, likely into certain death. It just eats your input constantly, and with a game like this, that is a guaranteed death sentence. The entire game is fucking impossible simply because of the controls. I was never a big fan of Super Meat Boy, just my personal preference, but I can at least respect it for spending a lot of time making controls and levels that play well and make you feel rewarded when you actually complete them. Tofu Boy just makes you feel like you wasted your fucking time. There are only two impressive things to say about this game. The first of which is that Tommy Tallarico, renowned video game composer and vegan, donated the music, which PETA proudly boasts on their game's title screen. I mean, it's not like they can brag about having good controls or gameplay, but music? Oh yeah, we got that covered. The second is that Team Meat actually responded to this game and made Tofu Boy a playable character in the real Super Meat Boy. Simply type the unlock code PETA file and you're rewarded with a tired, listless, poor excuse for a character that can barely jump and exists for no other reason than to piss off self-righteous vegans. Ha! Take that, PETA! Now get ready for something truly awful because the last game we're going to take a look at today is Pokemon Black and Blue. This came out in 2012 as a response to Pokemon Black and White. After all, if you're going to criticize a game for promoting cruelty to animals, obviously you want to wait until the fifth generation to do so. In this one, you play as Pikachu, who has escaped from his evil master Charon and is now using his electrical powers to brutally slaughter any humans who stand in his way. So if you've ever wondered what PETA's ideal world would be, imagine cows with flamethrowers. You have your trademark moves like Quick Attack, Thunder Shock, and Rap Attack, which all function just like they do in the original game. Thunder Shock can paralyze, Rap Attack deals damage over multiple turns. It's a pretty nice attention to detail. But then they also give you the new PETA elemental attacks. Pikachu used protest! It's not very effective. Okay, it doesn't actually say that, but you were thinking it too. Every trainer you defeat, you get to add one more Pokemon to your party. Congratulations, Oshawa! You're free! But oddly enough, you still get to name them. Okay. Toby. Of course, you can't get through this game without encountering even more of PETA's propaganda videos, but at least this time they're optional and not treated as prizes. No, instead you get prizes like wallpapers. Oh yeah, isn't that just lovely? The final boss you fight is Ash, who is dressed like Dick Dastardly on loan from Willy Wonka. Of course, with PETA being such activists for love and understanding, your only choice is to violently beat him down with lightning, fireballs, and choking vines as he attempts to assert his dominance in return. Ash cracked a whip across the back of Toby! Oh, I am so going to hell. Have I ever shown any inkling of concern for you one way or the other? Oh, oh, that is rich. That is rich. Ash never cared about Pikachu. That is absolute and total bullshit and you know it, PETA. If you would have bothered to watch any episode of the anime, you would have learned Ash cares more about Pikachu than he even cares about himself. Never showed any inkling of concern? How about the time Ash forfeited a gym battle just because Pikachu was getting hurt? Not just once, but twice. No badge is worth losing Pikachu. Or when he left him to live with other wild Pikachu, even though it meant giving up the one thing in the world he loved more than anything else. So yeah, why don't you get your thumb out of your ass and actually learn about the thing you're criticizing before you go around claiming stuff that never fucking happened. In the end, you convince all the trainers to commit to a higher calling, proving once again that violence really does solve everything. And that's about all I can take for now. There were other games like Super Tanuki Skin and Dress Up the Trollsons, so we might take a look at more later, but there's only so much propaganda someone can deal with in one day. 
<laughs> Maybe that's why Zero quit. I suppose I should be more angry about these games, but really, it's almost impossible to take them seriously. Knowing everything we know about PETA, these games are just a way to get attention. But for what they're worth, at least they're actually playable. I've played more than my share of crap, and as games, these are just middle of the road. I can't even really get mad at them, because at the end of the day, it's a free browser game made by PETA. What did you honestly expect? After all, if you're going to recruit someone, you better get them young before they're able to do science above a fourth grade level. Thank you, Carr. <laughs>